improve your Django skills by building a digital resume website. Bobby Stearman teaches this course. He provides a free resume website template and will teach you how to program the back end using Django. Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Did Coding here and I've put this course together today because if you're anything like me, you've applied for numerous developer roles over the years and you've been successful some of the time, but you've missed out on most. Now this is because there are so many talented developers out there. So you must stand out in a crowd. It's absolutely paramount that you do. So I'll show you today how to digitize your resume using Django. Now the reason we're using Django is twofold. Firstly, with Django, you have a built-in admin page, which allows you to create, read, update, delete objects. So this will avoid the need to update the source code in your project. So we can add objects in the admin page and it gets rendered straight into the HTML, which is fantastic. And secondly, it gives us a chance to polish up on our Django skills. So we will be, firstly, finding a template. We've got a template that you can download for free. We'll be then creating a Django project. We'll be building out the back end, the front end, and then we'll be stringing it all together. So this will take just over an hour. So let's jump straight into it. This is the template that we're going to be using. So this has been designed by James Granger Design, a colleague of mine. Um, it's fantastic, he's put this together. We're not charging anybody. You can access this template in our GitHub repository, which is github.com slash bobby dash decoding slash decoding underscore resume underscore template. So decoding resume template. Like I say, completely free. All you need to do is clone a repository and you will have access to it. I will show you today how to then string that template into a Django project, okay? This is what the template looks like. At the very top here, you have an avatar, you have a bio, or there will be a bio. We've then got a link to download a resume, so we'll need a PDF version of your resume and we'll attach that to a user profile. We have key skills, coding skills with a slide bar. We have some certificates that we can scroll through. We have portfolio section. We have a testimonial section and we also have recent posts. That's the index page. We have a portfolio list view, okay? We have a blog list view, which is almost the same, and a contact page. The portfolio and blog pages will also have detail pages as well, and they will be rendered to the front end with a rich text editor, which we will also add to Django Admin. So what we add in a rich text ad editor will be rendered directly as it's seen in admin to the front end, which is fantastic. Like I say, we will be creating objects in Django admin without the need to change the source code for the project. Okay, and this contact us form allows in potential employers to contact you, add the name, the email, and the message and submit. Great, so that is the template. That is what we will be building today in Django. So first thing that we need to do is use a text editor. I'll be using Visual Code Studio today, and this is opened up in development. So the first thing, I've got a terminal open here as well. First thing that we need to do is create a virtual environment. Now I'm using a, a virtual environment wrapper, so I can just use the command make virtual env, and we will call this resume demo. Okay, and that will go ahead and it will create a virtual environment on my machine and it will fire it up. The reason I know it's fired up is because we've got this in brackets here. So resume demo. So now that's there, we now need to, uh, we ha now have access to pip. So we can pip install Django. We will also pip install pillow. And we'll also pip install um, Django CK editor okay they're the three that we will need straight off the bat okay and once that's finished installing all of that we will then start a django project and we will call it again same as the uh, virtual environment we'll call this resume demo okay don't worry if you have this come up it's just telling you that you need to update pip just simply paste that in there 
Bob's your uncle. That's installed the latest version of PIP, so we're all good to go. Right, so now we need to CD. No, we don't. We need to start a project. So because we've installed Django, we can now access Django Admin. And we can say Start Project, and we'll call this Resume Demo. Okay, that will start a project. We can now CD into Resume Demo. There we have it. And let's open that up in my browser here. There we have it. It's there. Do you know what? Let's open up a new, open a folder. Development. And we'll just open it up here so we haven't got all of the other stuff. Let's open up terminal. And we will go work on Again, that's another command from uh, Virtual EMV Wrapper. So we've got these pop-ups. So we'll call, we'll run resume demo. Well, we've got the um, Virtual EMV up and running again. And this is the project directory. So when you um, start a new project, you get the manage.py file, and then you'll also have the resume uh, resume demo directory with the Dunder init file, we got ASGI settings, URLs, and um, WSGI. Okay, so what we'll do, now we can access the manage.py. What we can do, we can Python manage.py. We'll start an app, and we'll call this main. Okay, and now we will go about, so what I'm, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to be referencing my other screen because I've built this project in a um, uh, previously just to make sure that it all works and it speeds things up rather than having to watch me do typos and and uh, have to debug all of my code. So I'm going to move this through from a pr from another screen, copy and pasting it across. So that is nice and smooth, and we aren't going to be too clunky. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up settings.py. Okay, and this is what it looks like when you first install the Django project. So right at the top here, import OS. So that allows us to access the operating system. This project will require the use of um, static files. So um, the reason we have OS is because we'll be using that in a second to um, join the base directory to the new static file directories. Um, we have this is the base DIR, which we'll be referencing. That's the secret key. Now, in a production environment, you would secure that maybe in an EMV of some sort, but we won't in this tutorial. Debug is true. Allowed host is all good. And what we need to do is we need to add main into our installed apps. We also need to add CK editor. There we go. That will allow us to use a rich text editor in the admin page. Middleware, we don't need any middleware that I know of. Just double check. No, we don't, but we will be adding a context processor. So the context processor will go in here. Processors.py and the context process py will be looking like this so we'll be um, importing the user model here so that's the built-in user model and we'll be just adding um, a keyword argument called me uh, to the context process and it'll all come um, you'll understand what's happening soon enough uh, if we go to settings.py we can now add that context processor to the um, context processor here so we'll have um, resume demo and there's dot contact processes dot project context and we don't need that last one there. Okay, so now this um, context here, so this keyword me will be accessible in the templates that we're building out later on in this demo. 
So WSGI application, we don't need to do anything there. We're just going to use the built-in um, SQLite 3 database. Now you could upgrade that to PostSQL or MySQL, but we won't in this. Um, so when we make the migrations, there'll be a DB SQLite uh, file that appears, but don't worry too much about that. We'll change the EN to GB. And what we'll then do is we will add the static files does and the static root, the media root, and what have you. Okay, so I won't go through what we're trying to do here, but essentially we need to access static files. So static files are like CSS files, JavaScript files, and, and, and images that just don't change, right? So they sit in a static directory. We will be accessing them. So things like logos, things like cascading style sheets. So these settings here allow us to, or it tells the system where those directories are gonna be and how they're gonna be managed. Okay, so that is it. We don't need to do anything else to settings, but we do need another file in here called urls.py. Oh, it's already in there, sorry. Um, yeah, we don't need that, so I'm getting carried away. So any urls py, um, py file, I will then copy all of this across. So we need to add include path, we need to bring in settings from django.conf and we need static from conf.urls.static. And we will be adding the path mains.url. So we haven't even created that file yet, but we'll do that in a second. Um, but we're adding this to the URL pattern. So all of the URLs in the main.urls file that we'll create in a second will then become part of our URL patterns, okay? We could call it main, namespace equals main. So that is what we'll call it in the app in a few seconds. And then we've got this here. Um, so if settings.debug, we then add the static URL and a static root to the URL patterns. And we also do it the same for media URL and media root. So in development environment, we will simply have a static directory in here and we'll have a media, it'll be called media file. So as we save an avatar or an image, it will add a directory and it'll add the image or the file to the directory within the media files directory. Okay, so that is the URLs there. Main, what we need to do is straight away, we need urls.py, right? So we will have that file and we will create that. We'll be referencing views that we haven't created yet, but we'll add it in there anyway. Okay, and the reason we're doing that is because I'm trying to do this in, in, uh, in a good order. Normally you would add this after you create the views and you wouldn't create the views until you added the models, but we're referencing this file in this urls.py file. So um, we're bringing in path and views, okay, which we haven't created yet. The app name is main, okay. In fact, what we could do, because we might need to make some migrations before we do this. So I will uh, comment those out. Okay, because so we, we haven't produced, we haven't created those yet anyway. So we will start in order. So what you, where you start with, you start with models. Okay, so models, models are um, translate to um, database tables. Okay, so um, we will create a model. Uh, the name becomes the table name, and fields become the rows. Sorry, the columns, and then for each object that we save, becomes each row in that table. So that's basically what a um, Django model represents. Copy and we'll paste, okay? So bringing in models and we're bringing in the built-in user model that is in contrib auth models. We need that because we're gonna extend that for the um, user profile, okay? And we'll be extending it using something called signals, but we'll go through that in a second. We then bring in Slugify because we need a slug for our blog and our portfolio. We then bring in CK Editor. So this is Django CK Editor, it's a rich text field. So this we can add this rich text field to the blog and the portfolio. So let's create a skill uh, model. Uh, we have a meta class um, and I always add these, They're not necessarily needed. By default, it will, it will pluralize the name but I add it in there anyway, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so name equals, this is a char field. So these will be the skills. So we had, go back in here 
These will be these skills here, okay? This is what we're trying to replicate. So we want coding skills and we want key skills, okay? So we've got the name of the, of the skill, the score. So if this was a key skill, or sorry, a coding skill, we'd want to score it because we want these sliding bars on here to um, represent 95 or 80% of the skill or the not your, your expertise in a certain skill. We then have an image. The reason we've got an image or a file field because this is an SVG. So these images here are SVGs. So for each key skill, we want an image. Okay, so we'll do that. And then is key skill, which is a Boolean. So it's true or false. So if this is true, then this object would represent a key skill. If it's false, it would represent a coding skill. So we then have a um, string function and it just returns self.name, okay? So that's our skill model. We then have a user profile. So this is what extends the built-in user model. That's why we've got a one-to-one -one field here. Uh, on delete cascade, we'll only be producing or creating one user profile. So that will be us as a super user. We have an avatar, which is an image field. This is why we brought in um, pillow. Upload to, and this will create a directory in media files called avatar. And when we save a file in there, that is where that avatar will go. Got a title, a bio. So the idea of a bio is this bit here. So that will, that will appear there when we add it to the templates. We then have skills, which is many to many. Okay, so it would be many to many of these skills here. Uh, and then we have a CV, which is a file field. This will be uploaded to a CV, CV directory. So each time you update your CV on your paper copy, you'll update this or upload it to this field here, and it will save the new copy in the uh, directory. And then the string function or method here just uh, returns first name and last name of the user model. We've then got a contact profile, which is a timestamp which that gets added automatically. Okay, so it's a date time field, then a name, email, message. So if we look back on here, if we're going to contact, name, email, message, that's what we're trying to capture here. Testimonial, we have a thumbnail. This is for the testimonial on home. So what we're trying to do is just replicate all of these elements, right? So this is, we need a thumbnail. We need a, in here, we're going to have uh, the name of the person who's actually given a testimonial and the role. And then we have the quote itself. So in here, we've got name, role, quote, and is active. We're adding this is active Boolean field to all of these models or the testimonial, the, the portfolio and the blog, because Although we want to add a testimonial, we want to be able to quickly switch it on and off. So if it's inactive, we don't want it to be shown up on the website. So that's why we've got an inactive field there. Media. So the reason we're doing this is because if we can add an image to a media model, that image gets saved into the media file the media directory within the media files directory. And we then have access to that URL when we're creating the rich text editor image. It'll all make sense a little bit later, but um, that's just an easy way of accessing static files in a template um, when we're messing around in admin, which I'll show you what that means soon. Uh, so is image, the reason we're, this, because we're doing this is because you could technically add a URL here um, for a video. And then if this was a false, it would be a, a video URL. It saves saving huge MP4s in your database. Save function. So, um, so if the URL is blank, then, sorry, if, sorry, self URL is not blank, then is image becomes false. Okay, so it programmatically adjusts this is image dependent on the, the URL field. And then we've got a portfolio. So a date. So this is the date in which the, the job was done. Name, description, body. So this is important. This is the rich text field. This is what, uh, this is the rich text editor that will be updating in the admin page. What you see is what you get rendered in the HTML or in the, uh, the browser. So that is really important that you have that there. So rich text field there is being referenced right at the top of the page here. So it's part of ckeditor.fields. We've then got an image, which would be the thumbnail, if you like, gets uploaded to portfolio. We've then got a slug, which is a slug field and is active. See, the slug field is populated here with the save method. So um, if not self ID, so basically if it's a new new object, we slugify the self.name, which what it does, it um, 
all of the uh, the the characters become lowercase and all spaces are then underscored. So it becomes a slug. We've then got the get absolute URL here. So it's portfolio slash slug um, self dot slug. We do exactly the same for blog. OK, so blog is basically the same as portfolio. And then lastly, we've got certificate, which is a date, name, title, description is active. Nothing fancy going on in, in certificate there. So that's models. What we we'll then do, we will register all of those into our admin. So we can access them. This is one of the most important parts of it. We want to be able to access all of those models in our admin page. OK, so what we're doing, we're importing all of them from dot models, all of the new models here. And then we're using a decorator admin dot register. We're registering the user profile, but then we're adding a class under that called user profile admin. What this does, this will allow us to display. This will allow us to display um, the fields that we want in the admin page. OK, so list display ID user. We've then got timestamp name and then also on here we've got read only fields. So the slug we cannot change. We don't really want to be changing that because the slug could be used. You could send a blog link. Uh, you could have a backlink somewhere for a blog page and you don't really want to be changing the slug because then that link becomes inactive. So when the slug is produced, that remains the same no matter what. So we have a re read only field. So that's what's going on in admin. We then want a way of creating the user profile using signals. So we'll go in main, new file, signals.py. And we will add this code to signals. What it's doing, it's um, importing post save, the built in user model, importing receiver, which is a decorator, and then we're bringing in the user profile, which we've just created. Now, what this signal is, it's a receiver. So when a object is created, when a user object is created, it fires a signal to this signal's P, um, PY file. There's a receiver that picks up that signal. And then this function is called, right? So it's create profile. So we bring in as keywords, um, sorry, arguments, sender, instance, created, and then some keyword arguments. So if created, so if the user object is created, then we want to create user profile and that will become user profile the objects dot create and then the user, which is a one to one field, if you remember, equals the instance. That is what's going to be used to create the user profile. So when we create a super user uh, in a few moments, uh, it, that user will be created. The signal will be fired. This will receive the signal. Bob's your uncle will have a user profile. But we need to wire this signals.py file in to the apps.py. And how we do that is we uh, overwrite the ready method. I am right. Yeah, we just have him boy itself. Brilliant. Okay, and then we need to import main dot signals. That's all we need to do. So when this will fire up the app itself, the main app, and it will just say, right, when ready, then we need to bring in signals. And now these signals will all work. So provide when the when the app is running, signals is all working. Okay. What we then need to do is create some model forms. So or a model form for our contact form. Forms.py. Oh, have I added the yeah, I have, that's fine. And what we'll do, go in forms. Oh, let's delete, delete that. We want to go in here and we want a new file, not a new directory. So forms.py. Paste everything in. Oh, sorry, I do apologize. Copy and paste. Importing forms, and we're also importing contact profile, which is the model that we made in the models.py file. So this will be a model form. OK, so we'll be uh, we don't actually need these. I never took these out when I was playing earlier. Actually, it's worthwhile showing you. So let's save that. So this is a model form and this re represents a form against the model that we just created contact form. So what you need to do is we, you need to create these variables, one for each field that we want in the form itself. OK. So we've got name and then we want to, this here is the representation of 
uh, this is what will be rendered in the HTML on the front end, okay? Um, so forms. this is a character field, max length equals 100. So the reason that's 100 is because in the models file, where is it? Let's go into contacts. There we go. Name, max length 100, okay? So that's why we're doing that. We then have required true, so this is a field that is true. So this will render an input element and it will be required true, okay? Widget equals forms.text input. So this is a text, so the input will be type equals text. Then we have some attributes. So we have a placeholder, and in this case it will be star, which will be rendered in the actual um, input itself, will be star full name dot dot. And then you can add class. Now we don't actually need class. If you were to buy a template, the forms that you have in the template may have certain classes. This is where you would add those classes to make sure that the form that gets rendered on the front end is exactly the same as what is in your template. Okay, so that's what we've got there. We don't actually need them because we're not using form control in our template. So I'll remove them. So we've got email, email field, max length is 254, which is completely standard for an email field. And then we've got a placeholder. We then got a message. Now this is slightly different. It's not a text input, it's a text area. Now we want rows six. Now this all depends on your template. In my template, we have six rows. Okay, so that's why we've got row six, uh, but you might have 10 or whatever. Placeholder is message. Then we have a class meta model, which this represents is contact profile. And the fields that we want to render is name, email, and message. That is our forms.py file. Then what we need to do is add our views. So let me copy all of that. I'll go in here in our views.py file and I'll dump them all in there. Okay, so right at the top here, I've added import messages. The reason we want import messages is when a form when a uh, form is valid and when a form is saved, we will then want to render a message so that the message pops up and says, thank you very much for submitting the form or what have you. So I'm bringing in messages to do that. Uh, from dot models import, and then we want to import all of these different models. From Django dot views import generic, we're going to be using the generic views, template view, list view, form view, so on and so forth. They're great. These built in form uh, views, they're all class based views, but they're, they're built specifically for um, tasks that happen regularly. So for instance, a list view, you're rendering a list of objects. So it just does all of the hard graft in the background. So you've got, you can render, a, you, you can render a, a web page, they say a form view with only two or three lines of code, which is great. You can also do function based views, but um, I like to use these built in built in views. They're fantastic. So we've got index view. This will be our homepage. Okay. So we're using generic template view. So we need, we in a template view, you need to add the template name. So what name, what template are we using to render this view? In this case, it's going to be main index. So what we'll do is we need a directory in main called templates. And within that directory, we need another one called main. Okay. Within there, that is where we will add our templates. We'll do that shortly. We don't need to do that just yet. We then call the method get context data um, and we call a super call there and then context. We can then add keywords to context here. So testimonials. So we want testimonials, certificates, blogs and portfolio. These are objects. So these are um, these will be added to context and we can reference them in templates uh, so that we can actually render a list and do a for loop using uh, template filters and things like that. So we're calling testimonial objects and we're filtering everything where is active equals true. This is where that field in models comes in really handy. So in testimonial, okay, is, act is active defaults to true. But if in admin we click it to be untrue or false, then it will not appear in the context because we're filtering out everything that's, um, sorry, filtering out everything that's untrue. So is active equals true. So only true objects, live objects, active objects. 
We then have certificates, same again, blog, same again, portfolio, same again. And then we're adding those keywords to context. And then we return context. So now in index, we can reference testimonials. And that will be a list of objects that we can um, render. Contact view, this is a form view. So you name the, the template, you name the form class, and then a success URL. This is where the user will be redirected when the form is valid. So we then call the um, form valid method, pass through self and form. So this is the form which we're passing through, which is a contact form. Form.save, so we save the form instance, and then we send this message here, which is message.success, and the text is thank you. We will be in touch soon. And that is what will be shown on the front end. We then have a portfolio view, which is a list view. The model is portfolio. You do have to have a page name by. So this will only show 10 or the first 10 objects. And then the template name, the query set. What we're doing there is we're filtering the query set is active true. Okay, so only true portfolios. Detail view, same again, except for um, this will be the slug. So we'll add this in the URL. So it will show the detail. So it will show the object that has the slug in the URL itself. Blog view, identical to the portfolio view and the blog detail view is identical to the uh, portfolio detail view. The only difference is we're looking at different HTML files. Okay, so they are the views. We will save that. Just looking at my, uh, what we have not done is we have not created a requirements file. So we will go pip freeze requirements dot txt and that's just created this so these are all the requirements for the project we've got django like you can see django ck editor we've got pillow because we're messing around with uh, images and that's all the um requirements happy days so what we now need to do is we need to make migrations so python manage.py make migrations we then need to python manage.py migrate. And then we need to go python manage.py create super user. That will then allow us to create, I'll move this up a little bit. That will then allow us to create a super user. See, that will default to Bobby, but I'll put that in there anyway. Bobby at didcoding.com password it'll ask you twice it won't look like you're typing but it will pick up the keystrokes there you go so super user created successfully so what we now do is we'll go python manage.py run server I'll tell you what we haven't done we haven't uncommented out the uh, urls so we, we've wired in the um the views but we haven't uncommented these out. So I'll do that quickly. So back on the URLs here. Um, remember, we wired this main app into our URL comp file. So everything that appears here are URLs specific to main. So path is blank. This will be our home page. So this will be um, you know, local host port 8000. This will be your index as view. Because we're using class based views, you must use this dot as view. If it was a function based view, you wouldn't need that name is home so that's how we reference it in the template so it'd be main um home that's how we would reference it i'll show you it when we work through that shortly contact view same again got um portfolio view it's portfolios just pluralized um then we've got this is important so this is the detail view so this is portfolio slash slug okay so the url will have the slug of that object in it and that's how we're capturing it in the detail view same again for blog and blog slug okay so they are the urls so if we now go back in our terminal um we've got that up i should just be able to double click that there we have it that is not one second just because i've got the server running on something else okay there we have it right okay you just had a sneak peek so i had a server running on the previous project or the project that i'm copying from so what you saw there is what i'd built earlier 
Okay, so nothing's working because we haven't got a template there, right? We'd expect that. So if we go to admin, which is the built-in admin page, and then sign in with the user credentials we've just added, there we have it. Okay, so we've got the authentication um, models. This is the one that we've just created, okay? So we'll give me a first name. We could have done that in the um, terminal, but there we go. So we've now got an email, first name, last name. That signal should have produced a user profile, which it has, great. So this is the user profile now, okay? So let's uh, choose uh, avatar. So what we'll do is let's go into desktop development. I'll go into, this is the one I was playing with earlier. Media files, avatar, let's use that. Title is um, backend developer bio. Um, this is just a demo bio. And what we'll then do is we will add a skill. So this can be Django. And I'll put that, why not? Let's go 100%. It's not a key skill. This is my coding skills. Save. We'll have HTML. And we'll have this as 95. Save. We'll have CSS. We'll have this as 90. Save. And then what we'll do, we'll add another one, which will be JavaScript. Uh, let's just for just to change things up. Let's put 75. Save. Let's have a key skill this time. So we'll have people, person. <laughs> we'll have, uh, it doesn't really matter on a number there, key skill. But what we'll do, we will add media files, skills. Open, save. Uh, team, player, I mean, you can put whatever you want in yours. This is just me building it out is a key skill, save. And we'll have um, um, self starter. We'll have that as key skill icon. These all come in their template, by the way, all of these images. And CV, so if I go into that, these are all ones that I've added earlier. So there we go. Save. So what I'm doing is I'm building out the, the, the admin page. So this is the benefit of using Django, right? So this built in admin page allows us to create. So at any point we could change the avatar. At any point we can change the bio. So um, I am adding to the bio. Yeah, so, and if you save it, that will then become the new bio. So you don't have to, when you get this in a production environment, you don't have to go into the source code. All you need to do is change the back end. That's the benefit of doing this. Okay, so we've added, let's add a testimonial. So we'll choose, choose a thumbnail, media files. Uh, use that one. Name, Bobby, role, manager. This is a test quote, that'll do. Uh, save and add another, do you know what, we'll just quickly flash through this. Name, Bobby, to manager, to quote to, And I won't do this to all of them because it'll be a waste of your time. Bobby three, manager three, and quote three. They're now the three objects. So what we can do, we can make that inactive. That won't appear, you see, is active. Okay, so that won't appear, on, well, it won't be rendered on the front end, but let's keep that in there. See the benefit there? So we've done user profile, testimonial, skills, they're all in there. That's when we, when we were adding them here, all you had to do, click add, and it adds it to the skill because it's a many-to-many -many field, okay? Again, you can change these at any point, change that to, you know, eight, or not in a key. Change CSS to 292, for instance, save. 
and that becomes 92, okay? Media files, let's add one of these images. We'll add that. That's just a thumbnail from another video that I've produced. Um, random image, save. Uh, contact profiles, we don't need that. Certificates, we'll just add one certificate, shall we? So now, now, name um, would be, um, let's go um, advanced Django course, um, free code camp, description. This is a test desk. Description. That will do. We won't add three certificates, you'll get the gist. And then what we need to do is add a blog profile. So this is where the rich text editor comes into it, okay? So author, we can have Bobby Stearman, name, we can have this as test blog, we can have description, test description. And then what you can do is you can have um, you can just have header two. This is a header, and whatever we put in here is what will be rendered. What you see is what you get, right? So, this is a uh, random description, and then this is what I wanted to show you the, the media file. So, let's go open up another browser, okay go back in the media files. This here will give us access to this URL. Okay, do you get that? That is the URL of the image we've just saved into our database, sorry, into our static files. Okay, if we go into blog, and add an image to here. Just toy around with this. Um, it, sometimes it won't render right on the front end, but if you toy around with the rich text editor, you can get it to work. So if we add an image, the URL, just paste the URL that we just added in there. Alt text, test, image, admin main media. Oh, what have I done there? That's not right. I want that. Let's copy that. There we go. Right, width, we'll have, these are these are links, so if you just put 800, you can stick a border on there if you want. Um, we'll align it left. There's a whole bunch of other bits you can do on there. Link, advanced, so click OK. OK, and then we'll choose an image. This will be the thumbnail for the image, so you can, you can pick the same one if you like. Is active, save. And for giggles, we'll add a portfolio as well. We'll do exactly the same again, right? So now, now. Name is test description, test description. And then we'll have um, header two, header. This is a description. This is the end. And in between that, we will add an image. Same again, don't need to get too fancy. Width, we'll put 800, I think. Stick a border on there, we'll put four on this time, and left, okay, choose a thumbnail, happy days. Okay, I think we've now got all of the bits and pieces. So that took a little bit of uh, jiggery pokery to get that all up and running in the back end, but that's all we now need to do. See, I really, I could could now um, duplicate these blog, these blogs that we've got, um, blog two, blog three, whatever, but it's, it's no biggie you can do that in your own time i've just constructed the back end in a way that i know this is going to work and just if you're following along get this done get three blogs get three portfolios and it will look fantastic on the front end so that is the back end basically done what we now need to do is wire in the front end so we have got the templates here and the directory for the resume is here so what we need to do is we need our static files so we will take these We'll copy them and we'll dump them into this is our this is the project by the way so new folder we'll call this static and we will paste them simply paste them in there okay so they are all of the static files that we need 
go back into the resume and we then want all of these. So keep your finger on control, just select all of them. You don't need the license to read me, copy them and we'll add them to main templates, main or paste. Okay. They're all of the templates. We now need to wire them in. Okay. If I just opened one of these now, it's going to look terrible, right? Okay. Cause it just doesn't know what the static files are. Just doesn't know what's going on. Okay. Because they're now in a Django project. If I open up them in the original, it will work because that's just the way it's wired up. Okay. So we don't need that. Let's close that. Let's close that. Let's close that. Let's go back in a visual uh, studio, right? So these are now the um, templates that we've put together. We'll bring our term. We don't need to see the term. Do you know what? I'll close that down for now. We don't need that. So this is the index file. Okay. So um, it's a standard HTML file. Okay. You've got a head, you've got a body and within that body, you then got a, a navigation. So we've, we've tried to be as detailed as we can or helpful as we can in the documentation of these uh, HTML files. So this is the navigation bar. This is the content for this particular page. So there's loads of sections. A bit further down, actually, let's just hide them. It'd be a lot easier. A bit further down, we've then got um, the footer. Okay, and then we've got the scripts. These are the body, these are the scripts here. Okay, nothing's going to work because it's referencing files that Django just doesn't know where to find them. So if I was to render this, this index page, so in, in fact, let's go ahead and do it. So new terminal, work on uh, resume demo, python manage.py run server. And what I'll do, I will just open up that browser there. Right. So it, this is, this is the homepage, right? So it's found the index.html as per the views. It's found the template, but it just looks terrible. It's because it doesn't know where the CSS is. It doesn't know where the JavaScript is and all of the links are all squiffed. So we need to um, load static files and we need to wire all of this in. So that's what we're going to go and do. And the way you do this is uh, we need a base HTML. So we will save index as base.html. And what we then need to do is create another directory in main. We'll call this partials. And within here, we'll need a new file called messages.html. We need another one in here called nav.html. That'll be the navigation element. New file, and we'll call this butter.html. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to dissect up this HTML so that um, we can then use template tags. So Django has a range of template tags that allow you to easily include other parts of HTML, which uh, you need to do is just reference the path. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. So right at the top of the page, I need to open up my uh, other project here and go on my base HTML. What you need to do, and you need to do this on most of them actually, is load static. Okay, so that template tags allows us to access static files which are all the files that are now in this directory here. Okay. The CSS the images, the JavaScript. Okay. We then go down, we'll go down this all the way from the top here. So we've got author, which is decoding and James Granger design. We've then got canonical, which we need to add uh, the context processor. If you remember in settings.py, where is it? So we added the context processor here. But if you see here, all you always have access to request. Okay. So that's what we need to get hold of here. So it's request dot path. Okay. So that is what you add in canonical. In fact, I'm just going to copy these across to save me messing about. We then have a link, which is home. And then what we're, what we're using here is a template tag called URL. 
So relationship home, this is main. So this is the app main and it's called home, which is our index page. We then in description, well, these are all SEO tags really uh, in the head of a HTML file. This is how I always manage them. I add a block template tag and I call it description. And this allows me to have a description of a HTML page in the actual, I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then I have another one for keywords. We've got the icon. This is a little icon that appears at the top of the, the web browser. And this is trying to find images, but it can't find images because images, um, you know, where is, what is the path for that? We need to reference the static file. So what we'll do, we'll link. There we have it. So we're using the static template tag. We're loading static at the top here. And then we're referencing the static here. So now we're looking in the static directory in a directory called images, and we're looking for icon.jpg. Now in static, we don't, we have images. Okay. So we'll be looking for icon, which is icon JPG. Okay. So we'll be looking for that. That's what we're looking for. Happy days. And we've got static. So static, again, we're looking for CSS. We haven't got the path, so we need to reference static. Uh, and again, with style CSS. So what we'll do is we will add all of these. Okay. And I always have a block uh, template tag here and I always call it extend header. This allows us to use CSS specific to a certain page within that template rather than having it loaded on every page. It's very, very handy doing that. Okay, we've then got the body. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to copy that and I'm going to remove the header element. So actually this is what I'm gonna do. Right, okay, so this is the header. The header remains the same on all of these pages. It's not like we have a, if a page is active, then it is highlighted. We don't do that in this template. So you don't need to worry. So all of this here can be cut and can be dumped in the nav.html. So first off, we'll have load static, and then we'll dump all of that navigation in here, okay? And then in the base HTML, what we need to do is include it. So we use another HTML tag. So it's include. So we're now including main. So that's the main app, partial, sorry, the main directory, partials, nav.html. So we don't need all that HTML there. It saves repeating ourselves. We also need to add some code, which isn't in the template, I don't believe. One second. No, it's here. Right. Okay. So there's an if template tag that I can add in here. So this is just some code that I use occasionally. Um, so if messages are rendered to the um, HTML document, so for message in messages. So if there is a messages um, dictionary or list, so for each message, it will render a script. So this is JavaScript. So it'll be a script and it'll be an alert. So this will pop up with a little alert at the top of the screen with the actual message. In that case, it'll be thank you for contacting us. We'll get back to you soon. So that is our messages HTML. If we go back in a base, we can then import or include messages into the body. So it always appears in the HTML. Then we need to do the same for all of the content and all of the footer. So if we go back to the footer stage, foot, sorry, the footer element, we'll cut that, we'll dump that in footer. Again, load static. Don't forget to do this <laughs> because you will run into an error and we'll just uh, tidy it up a little bit, bring it all back. Oh, there we go, save. And the base, we will then include that. Copy. That's the footer. And then with the content, what we're going to do is we're going to have a block. So we'll have block content. And then we'll have end block. Okay, so this is important, right? That little block there is what we're going to be using uh, when we render the index HTML. So in the index HTML, it will contain all of this 
um, HTML, the content essentially. And we will use a different con uh, template tag in index to extend base. So index will then be a combination of this HTML and the base HTML. Okay, so we will cut that. We're going to index. We'll highlight. Oh, we'll, so we'll go into index. We'll highlight everything and we'll paste it. And we will bring that back to tidy it up a little bit. There we have it. Okay, so now at the top of this page, we will need a whole bunch of stuff, which I'll show you what we're going to do here. Copy, and we'll paste that in. And I'll walk you through what I'm doing. Section, and we'll have one at the bottom here, just closing off the block. End block, save, and I'll just go from the top, right. Okay, so we're extending main base. Okay, so when we render the home page, it's looking for index HTML and it's slotting in all of the information in this HTML in the blocks that we're stating. Okay, so everything that's in block content will be interjected or injected into this block. That's how it works. Okay, so we'll save that. Actually, before we move on, let's just update these. Remember, it's looking for JavaScript those JavaScript files are in a static directory. So we will add the static path. So this one becomes static JS, static JS, and then we add a footer here. Again, it allows us to add JavaScript to a certain HTML files that we don't necessarily want to load into the entire template. Okay, or, or in all templates, should I say. So this block content is what will be rendered into this block, okay? This block title is what will be rendered into, where is it? Can't see wood through the trees. Uh, did I even add that in there? One second. I might not have done. Oh, I did, I just didn't copy it across. I do apologize. So title will be block title, okay? So the title here, anything we put here, which we could put did coding dash home. That will be rendered into that block there. Okay. Description that will be rendered into that block and so on and so forth. CSS. If we had a special CSS file that we wanted on this particular page, we'd add it here. If we wanted JavaScript, we'd add it there. Content, we'd have it here. Okay. Oh, we've got two start contents. I don't want that. Okay. Save. Now, the last thing we need to do is we need to change all of the images that this is referencing. OK, so this is all looking for images here. So what we'll do, we'll control H and what we need to do is. Static. Images slash and what that will do that will replace all of everywhere it finds uh, speech marks images forward slash it will replace with this code here which is what we want. There's nine occurrences. And then with the JPEG, .jpg part of it, we will just go .jpg and we'll do that. Okay, so we're, we're just, we just want to replace it all. Save, and I think we've also got an SVG. Yeah, there we go, SVGs as well. .svg. and replace all. And if we save that, I think that's it. I think that's all we need to do for this index page. Now we won't go through every page. Well, I'll, so what we're doing for index is exactly what we need to do for every single page, okay? So contact, for instance, and I'll show you what I mean on contact and I won't do all of the others because you know you can do that yourself. Um, I'll just copy those that code across from my other screen, but I'll show you what to do with contact in a second. But if I now, it looks like it's still the the, uh, server is still up and running. So if I now update this, it should, there we go. It's looking for logo. It can't find that because we haven't changed or we haven't um, updated the images in the nav. And it's probably the same at the bottom here. We haven't done it in the footer either, but everything else is rendering okay. Okay, it's, yet, it's not linked to the back end yet, which would we'll do that in a second. So footer, 
I won't mess around with the footer. I'll literally just go a copy, paste. Okay. So what I've done, this is now the footer. So I've changed all of the links to static. You can see that static images. But then at the bottom here, rather than the same 2001, I've used another template tag called now. So that will always have the most recent year. So if when, when we hit the 1st of January 2022, um, it will just show 2022 rather than 21. Okay, save that. Nav will do exactly the same. I will a copy. Again, you will have access to this project from GitHub, so don't worry too much. You'll have access to all of this code. Um, oh, one I haven't changed there. This index.html needs to actually change to URL main home. Otherwise, that link won't work. But it's looking for logo, which is in the static directory. Um, and it's adding a URL link to all of this. So the home link at the top of the page will now be main home. Portfolio will be portfolios, blogs, and contact. So that all of those links will now work. Go back into the browser, update. This now works. If you click it, it will take you back home. If you click contact, it will take us to the contact page, which looks beautiful. So let's fix that quickly. But that's the home page is working. But we'll do exactly the same as what we just did on, con on the index page. Okay, so all of this is exactly the same. We don't need that in the contact page, right? So the CSS can't find it we need to change all of that but save me doing all of that again all i really need is the contact section right content section i don't need any of the, any of the footer or anything like that all i need is the content and if i go index and if i just copy everything from here up go into contact and dump it here that should, I don't need that. That can all go back a little bit. I like that to be nice and tidy. Again, exactly the same as index. We're extending the base HTML. We're loading static and then we can change all of this. But again, this is why I like block, con uh, block um, template tags. So we can add whatever we want in here. And that will be the new title for this particular page. Okay, CSS, scripts, and this section here. Right, so let's focus on this a little bit because it's quite important. So contact us below. This is the form that we've currently got. Okay, but we need to make this a Django form, right? So what we need to do is add a method equals, and this is a post. And the action is the URL that we want to be referencing. So this is contact. So the reason we're putting that is because in our URLs, this is our URL, so it's contact, okay? Then we need to use, because this is a post, not a get request or anything like that, we need in here CSRF token. That will add a hidden element with a CSRF token, which uh, will then work. And then instead of these inputs, what we need is, you know, I'll just copy it across, but it's just form and then reference the name. So if I take those, if I dump those in here, okay, so rather than being inputs, we're now rendering the form. Now the form is contact form. That's what we produced in, the, in this forms.py. And we're bringing in the name field, the email field, the message field. We need to change that to message. Sorry, that's an error on my part. And that is it, that's all we need to do. But we need to close off the block, which don't forget to do that, because there will be an error. End block. And that is the contact form done, okay? We don't need to do that. All we need to do is just double check the, there we have it. Okay, so technically now, if I was to put Bobby Stearman, Bobby at did coding.com message. This is a test message. Now I click submit, hopefully. Thank you, we'll be in touch soon. Okay, that works. If we go into the database and go into contact profiles, there we have it. 
Okay, that's very, very useful. That just means that you, and this is another reason why we're using Django, any employer or anyone who wants to contact you using your contact form, you have a record of the timestamp and who it was, what the message was in the database. Okay, fantastic. So let's go back into uh, our project. We've done index, we've done contact. Now let's focus on, let's go on to portfolio. Same again, don't need any of this gump above content. In fact, all we need is all of this copy portfolio, paste that in there. We'll close the block off at the bottom of the page. I oh, know, no, we will once we find the bottom of the content scripts. I think that's that there. No, that's the footer. Don't want the footer either. End block. Save. Okay, so if we now just bring that back a little bit and that doesn't really matter. Um, that's all good. Uh, the only thing is we've got some image issues here, um, but I'm not going to change all of those. That's not, that's not a problem. Um, and we're not wiring this into the back end just yet. So I'm just making the templates like they are. So that's what you would do to each of them. But don't get too carried away because you need to add some Django template tags like for loops so that we can actually render real information. So we'll do that. But I'm not going to do the detail for the one and the um, blogs. I'll do that right at the end. I'll just copy and paste and walk you through it. But let's focus on the index page. So at the minute, we have got uh, this here. So we've changed this image. So yeah, it's showing a picture of me, but that's because that image is in the static files. What we need to do is we want to reference the avatar that we've saved against the user profile. And how you do that is you don't need to reference static now. You just need to use me, which is in the context, context processor. So that's me, okay? but that's the user profile. So we now, sorry, the user model. So we now go user profile dot avatar, which is the field. And you want the URL of that save. If we now go back into the home page here, go home, that will still show. It's just now what it's doing, if we go inspect, is now picking up um, media avatar. So this is the actual image that we saved against the profile rather than the file that's in a static file, which is exactly what we want. So I can now change this in a user profile to another image. Let's choose a file. And do you know what? I'll just stick that in there and save. If I go back in here, there we go. It's not ideal, but it gives you an idea of what we're doing here. So choose file, go back in here, go into avatar, choose that and save again. Bob's your uncle. There you go. Happy days. So what we then need to do, we need to wire up all of this, all of this, the CSV file here. And that's what we'll do now. Okay. So hi, I'm, you can go me dot first name because this is the user profile. And then you can use a filter called title. Now, if I put Bobby all lowercase in the back end in the database, that would render a capital letter followed by all lowercase. Um, a what would this be? I think this is title me dot user profile dot title. I think I won't go for all of these, but you because you'll get the gist of it, right? So and this will be me.userprofile.bio. So if we now go back in here and click update, there you have it. So hi, I'm Bobby, a backend developer. This is just a demo bio. Go back in the database, go back in the bio, dot, 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 and load a gobbledygook, press enter or save and update. And there we go. That's how that works. It's really, really handy. So if we then go into the button, so download. So what we need here, we want a link to the CSV file, which is linked to our user profile. So this will be me.userprofile.bio. 
dot cv dot url and that should now because it's got a download attribute if i click that it will then download my csv cv sorry you open it and that's the cv that i've got on that profile okay which is really handy contact that's currently saying contact html we want that as a See, I hope you understand what I'm doing here. I'm just going through and I'm, I'm adding Django template tags to uh, allow us to programmatically change this and render information from a database, which is really good, really handy. So that's contact. Now that link, I'm saving it as I go. That link will now take us to the contact page. Okay, and then what we'll do, we'll quickly do this and then I'll copy everything across from my other screen because it will take too long. So we'll go into, um, yeah, we'll do this one. In fact, I'll copy it. Do you know what? I'm going to copy it across and walk you through what I've done. So. If I take everything from my index. Now I go into here and go everything from there. So all of that work I just done, I'm just going to copy and paste over it anyway, because it's already done on the other screen. Okay. So do you know what? Let me go back quickly before I do that. Cause I want to show you what we're actually replacing. So in this section, no, let's go into this section, it's certificates, right? So this is a slider. So this is a slider outer, and then we've got a class here, certificate slider. That's being referenced in the JavaScript. That's what allows, that JavaScript is what moves these sliders across, right? So uh, that's what we're looking there. Um, we've then got a swiper slide, okay? So these are the elements. So that's one certificate, that's two, and that's three, okay? Well, I don't want those three. I want the ones that are in the database. Okay, so I don't want them to at all, but I want this. But rather than showing what it's got in here, I want it to render what's in the database. So to do that, we would use a for loop. For C in certificates, there we go, certificates. And then we want an if if c dot is active then render this if not don't render anything right so we'll then close off the if and if oh and i'm close off the four and four okay so this is now a for loop right but what is rendering is a load of gobbledygook so what we want is uh, there's no link for the certificates, but you'd put you could if that was a blog, you'd put um, the URL template tag. So we want this to be C dot. Just check the field certificates. I think at the bottom here certificates. So this could be title. So it'd be title. This would be c dot date dot date c dot what is this going to be? I needed to name title. Okay. So this is title. That would be in this case for my example it would be free code camp and then you have this would be description c dot description okay save so now rather than rendering gobbledygook is rendering actually something from the back end certificates the reason i'm accessing that is because it's in the context i added it in the context in views okay so if you go here that's what i'm accessing okay so it's all active certificates go back into index and save that I'm hoping I haven't buggered anything up no right so that's now showing one okay because we've only got one in the database but if I go to certificates and click inactive save that all won't render anything yeah so can you see what I'm trying to do here 
that's that's that so re refresh done okay so i'm not going to go through and do everything else because um you can see what we're trying to achieve you need to add four loops and if template tags to render the right information against this template okay so we'll go about and i will add this content here paste save and then render it oh end block we've got two end blocks don't want two end blocks save go back oh i've got two block contents as well okay that's that's always fun sorry i'm racing through i'm trying to there we go let's delete that one save that should now work there we go right okay so this is now all rendered from the back end so if we're going to certificate if we're going to skills Final change HTML to 98. Save that. Update 98%. Okay. And these these will all change as well. So if I change that to 50%, you'll probably see what I mean actually. So I'll go 50. Save. There we go. Okay. Team players, self-starter, it's looking at different images, certificates, we've got one in the database, featured work, I've got one, testimonials, I'll put three in there if you remember, but if we uh, was to make one inactive, for instance, save that, and update, there we go, we've only got two in there, okay? Test blog, okay, and if you were to click view all, what it will then do, it will then take you to the blog page, but we haven't done that yet, okay? so. I will quickly um, add all of these blog details. So copy, if I go to blog details, paste. So what we're doing here, blog de oh actually, and we'll do a blog copy, and we're going to blog, just a normal blog list page. Save, and if we go and render this now, it should look good. There we go. Okay, so this is rendering my one blog that I've got. So this is a list view. If I added another blog, it would appear there. It looks really, really good. So if I click on this, it'll open up the blog details view. Okay, uh, and right, okay, that doesn't that didn't render too well. So this, when I say you need to mess around with the CK editor, because it does, um, for some reason, it renders some of the information incorrectly, but that's fine. You know, this is just playing, playing with the information there. So we're going to blogs, blog profile, what I do is I just I wonder what that looks like that might help this is the end right you can see what I've done there I've just added some bits it's because the image is probably too small for the for the actual screen if I was to make it a bit bigger let's go back in there make this uh, image properties Change that to what a thousand. Let's have a look. Okay, save. There we go. It's starting to do something different now. Okay, so tinker, play around with it. What you see is what you get with a rich text editor, but it just allows you to design a different blog. So all of your blogs don't need to look the same, but you can use the same template, which is great and a really good benefit of using Django here. So if I now open this, all we've done is in the blog detail page, we have got, yeah, the object.name, author. So this is always being pulled through from the back end, um, but this is what's important. Okay, so the object.body, if I was to remove safe, all it renders is raw HTML, like that. So this is the HTML that the rich text editor is creating, but because we're using a safe template filter, it actually renders that HTML into something tangible that we can actually see and it's rendered well on the front end. So if I change that now back to safe, save, there we go. And I'll quickly, just for giggles, I will change the details page, copy this one. Where is it? There we go. Save, portfolio, copy and portfolio save so if i now go into here and go into portfolio 
there we go and click in portfolio that remember this is yeah, get again it's because the image that we've got in here portfolio uh, let's change this image properties so let's put that as a thousand and that'll probably work now there we go uh, again have a tinker uh, again but then look if we were to mark this as inactive and portfolio it won't work okay um to be honest that might still work yeah you it, you could also put in the uh, view that if that if the query so if the object is marked as inactive then you can do a render redirect so you can redirect back to the portfolios list so it will never show uh, a url but i haven't done that in this instance so that is it that is the template done so we have now got a digitized resume that is entirely um that is entirely made in django and we can change every single key element of this resume without having to change any of the core any of the um uh, code in the background so that's brilliant that is more or less the end of this I'll just, i will just recap right so what have we done we've just digitized a resume right so we've built a whole project in django we've digitized our word or pdf cv or resume and we've put it online so you would make this website you put it in a production and then you'll be able to send that link to an employer that will help you stand out in a crowd and the good thing is because we've used django we are able to use the built-in admin page and we are able to create read update and delete all elements of the resume so you never have to change the source code now that that is fantastic right so let me change it so you can actually see me again okay so that that is really really good i have really enjoyed putting this video together again my name is bobby stearman and i am from did coding please subscribe to my channel i do videos like this all of the time before i close the video off i'd just like to say thank you to my colleague james granger who helped me put this template together he designed it and uh, without him we wouldn't be able to give it away for free again it can be found on my github which is uh, github.com slash bobby dash did coding slash did coding underscore resume underscore template thank you very much for watching i have enjoyed creating it i hope it's useful and i'll see you in the next video thank you bye bye